Okay, let's go ahead and solve this exponential equation, and we're not going to use a calculator. And this is a typical type of problem that you might see like in Algebra 2, College Algebra, certainly pre-calculus. You need to know how to solve exponential equations. And uh, very often you'll see on the quizzes uh, and exams where you won't be able to use a calculator to solve a particular exponential equation. So don't panic. This is not that difficult. Matter of fact, if you think you could do this problem, now if you need a calculator, go ahead and uh, use a calculator, but I'm gonna suggest that you try not to use a calculator. But anyways, try to solve this thing, put your answer into the comment section. I'm gonna show you the correct solution to this equation in just one second. And then of course, I'm gonna explain this problem step by step. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. It really is my true calling to uh, help people learn mathematics. That's why I love it so much, because it's my belief that all students can be successful in math. Okay, And I'm especially speaking to those of you out there that have a tough time in math. Maybe you hate math. Maybe you failed math before in the past. Maybe you're frustrated with math. Listen, please don't give up. Here's three things that you need to be successful in math, right? And you need these three things. If you're missing one of these things, you're not gonna be successful in math. So the first uh, thing you need is a strong work ethic. You gotta put in the work, all right? So if you're taking one of these more advanced math course, uh, courses or any math course, and you're not really working hard, well, you're not going to learn the material, okay? So that's the first thing. The second thing you need is encouragement, right? And this is particularly important for those of you out there that are having a tough time. In other words, you gotta believe that it is going to be worth your while to put in the effort, that you'll actually be uh, successful learning the material. But here is the third thing you need, okay? The third thing you need is great math instruction, okay? Math is a very technical subject, and uh, when you learn math, hopefully it's not taught to you in an overly technical way because that can become very confusing. The way I like to uh, teach math is to explain things that all students can understand without watering down the material. So if you need help in your current math course or maybe some sort of special test that you're preparing for that has math on it, things like the GED, SAT, ACT, or maybe a teacher certification exam, or if you happen to be homeschooling mathematics, check out my math help program. I'm gonna leave a link to it in the description of this video. I literally have over 100 plus different math courses that span these categories and much, much more. I'm also gonna leave links to my math notes in the description as well. Note taking is critical. All students really absolutely need to have great math notes. So improve your notes and things will get much, much better. But you can use my notes in the meantime, if you like. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the solution to this equation, and here it is right now. Okay, so y is equal to negative five over seven, negative uh, five sevenths. This is the correct answer. How did you do? Well, if you were able to do this, even if you used a calculator, I'm gonna go ahead and give you a nice little happy face and an A plus. Now, if you if you needed a calculator to solve this, that's that's very good, okay? However, I'm gonna caution you that you still need to know how to do this problem without a calculator. But if you're able to do this without a calculator, matter of fact, I'm gonna give you an A++, a 110% and multiple stars, so you can celebrate your success solving exponential equations without a calculator. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this right now. So here, uh, we have an exponential equation, okay? So how do we know it's an exponential equation? Well, because the variable that we're trying to solve for, when in this case, it's y, is in the exponent, okay? Let's just uh, quickly contrast this with something like this. If I have x squared, I could draw that a little more, write that a little bit better, x squared is equal to 16. What type of equation is this, okay? Well, hopefully, you said, hey, isn't that a quadratic equation? Yes, this is a quadratic equation, and to solve it, of course, we simply take the square root of both sides. But notice where the uh, variable's at that we're solving for. It's the base, okay? So when we're looking at a power, this right here, let's just use this, for example, two to the fourth power. This two is the base, right? And this four up here is the exponent. The entire thing is a power. So 
in a quadratic equation, we're solving for something, a variable that is in the base, okay, of this particular power. In an exponential equation, we're solving for a variable that's in the exponent, and that's an entirely different ball game. So you need to be able to recognize what type of equation you're dealing with in algebra in order to know what to do. Okay, so this is an exponential equation, and basically, when you see an exponential equation, you're thinking two things, all right? First of all, the inverse function of an exponential function is a logarithmic function. So uh, in general, to solve an exponential equation, you're going to want to use a logarithm, that LOG button, on your calculator or LN if you're dealing with a natural base situation. If you don't understand what I'm saying, uh, it's a good chance that uh, you need to brush up on this. If you're at the Algebra 2 level or College Algebra Pre-Calculus level, and you're already a bit lost in what I'm saying, I want to suggest that you check out uh, any one of those courses in my Math Help program. You'll learn all this and much, much more. Okay, so again, we're looking at this exponential equation. We're thinking, all right, we've got to use logarithms or natural logarithms to solve this. But what if your teacher says, hey, put your calculator away? Well, then we're going to have to use a different strategy, and that is we're going to try to uh, find the same base uh, in terms of the powers that are going on here. Okay, so here, this is a base, and this is a base, right? So this is a base, this is the exponent, this is the base, this is the exponent. What you want to try to do is to equate these bases, i.e., try to get them to be the same, uh, the same number. Now, hopefully, that gives you a bit of a clue, and of course, you're going to have to have additional algebra skills to simplify this, but if you look at this, we have a 4, okay, now that we have 1 fourth, and 32, can you get these numbers, um, or can you write, well, let me just put it this way, can you write 1 fourth and 32 using the same base, or that's the way you would need to be thinking here, is there a number that both 1 fourth and 32 have in common, well, of course there is, let's go ahead and take a look at that right now. Okay, so uh, both 1 fourth and 32 have 2 in common. So this is the way you want to do this. So you look at 1 fourth, and we're going to start writing um, these bases in a way that we want to try to, get, again, have the same base on both sides of the equation. So I can write 1 fourth as 1 over 2 squared. Okay, so I'm thinking of powers of 2 because I'm like, hey, I think 32 is 2 to the fifth. Because you're looking at 4, you know 4 is 2 squared, so that's a pretty good clue that maybe you should think about 32 being a power of 2, and of course 32 is 2 to the 5th power, right? 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, all this right here is 32. All right, so hopefully you kind of see where I'm going here. Because let's just look here. If I have the same base over here, okay, if I have, let's just suppose, uh, let's just look at an easy equ uh, equation here. If I have um, 7 uh, to the x is equal to 7 to the 5th. Just look at this equation here. Super easy example, okay? So 7 to the x is equal to 7 to the 5th. This is an exponential equation. Let's solve this exponential equation. What is x equal to? Okay, and I don't overthink this. If these are, if this number is the same as this number, and they both have 7 as their bases, and this one has 5, well, x must be equal to 5. Okay, so anytime you have uh, two powers being equal to one another and the bases are the same, then you can equate the exponents and solve from there. Okay, and that's exactly what we're going to be doing right here. So let's go ahead and continue to clean this up so we can uh, find uh, what y is equal to. Okay, so we have 1, um, one over 2 squared, which, of course, is 1 fourth to uh, y power is equal to 2 to the 5th times y plus 1. Well, here, this is where students need to remember the rules of powers and exponents, okay? So we need to understand that we can write 1, to the, uh, one over 2 squared. That's uh, equal to 2 to the negative 2 power. Now, if you don't understand... Uh, the properties of powers and exponents. Yeah, you're going to have a difficult time uh, when uh, dealing with exponential equations, ex you know, problems like this. It's just one of these kind of foundational uh, skills and concepts you need to have down in algebra. And this really starts kind of like at the pre-algebra level, certainly at the algebra one level, but you need to have this down, uh, you know, really strongly if you're at the algebra two or college algebra level, okay, or intermediate algebra, any kind of second year algebra course. So, 
If you need help with all of this, again, I'm going to direct you towards like my Algebra 2 course to learn this stuff. But anyways, hopefully you know or you can see that one, uh, 1 over 2 squared is the same thing as 2 to the negative 2 power. Again, if you don't, if you're confused about this, then you need to brush up on your properties of powers and exponents. Okay, so I'm going to write this, okay, as this, okay, 1 over 2 squared as 2 to the negative 2 power. Now, why did I do that? Because now, okay, if I take a look at this equation, they both have the power uh, the same base okay so it's this power is equal to this power but notice notice here they have the same base so I can equate the exponents okay I'm gonna just kind of clean this up and set these things uh, equal to one another but before we continue on let's talk about this right here 2 to the fifth uh, to the y plus 1 this is another place where students uh, make mistakes Anytime you see a sum or difference, something that involves an addition or, or subtraction of something, especially a variable, put parentheses around that, grouping symbols, because right here, a lot of students just go 5y plus 1. That's wrong. You want to be thinking of this as 5 times y plus 1, because you need to carry forward with the distributive property. So that's 5y plus 5. Okay, this is another common place where students can make mistakes. And I've seen this over and over again. I've probably seen this particular mistake maybe 175,000 times in my teaching career. Now, maybe not that many times, but you get the idea. When you've been teaching this stuff, not for years, but decades, you see where students make common errors. Okay, so we have negative 2 times y. Again, this is another property of exponents. That's a to the m to the n. This is equal to a to the m times n, right? When we have a power to an outside power, we simply multiply using the distributor property uh, this uh, uh, number by that number. And so this is why negative 2 times y, we have 2 to the negative 2y, and then this 5 times this. Okay, again, you got to know those properties of powers and exponents. All right, at this point, though, let's take a look at what we have. We have the same base, 2, and now we can go ahead and equate the exponents, okay, we could solve it. These must be the same, okay? If I'm saying this is equal to this, well, these exponents must be the same. So all we need to do is uh, equate the exponents, and we will solve for this. So we have negative 2y must be equal to 5y plus 5. And you can see the algebra here. This is a basic algebra, basic pre-algebra stuff. Uh, you can see what I'm doing, right? I'm going to... um. Subtract negative 5 from both sides of the equation. I get negative 7y is equal to 5. Then I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by negative 7. And here you go. There is your answer. Okay. All right. So here's the deal. Again, if you're at these levels of uh, math, algebra 2, pre-calculus, college algebra, intermediate algebra, or if you're going back... Um, you know, to school, maybe you're going to be uh, having to take some sort of college level class. This particular type of problem is not a pre-algebra problem. Okay, so if you're pre-algebra, don't worry about this. You know, you're not at this level yet. And typically, this is not an algebra one or first year algebra problem. However, a lot of the things you learn in these courses are applied to solve this problem, particularly, um, you know, your understanding of uh, properties of powers and exponents is very, very, very important. And this is why when you learn mathematics, uh, you know, it's cumulative. Okay. So here's the thing. Okay. Whatever you don't know, you should have a whole list like this particular problem. Like, oh, I'm studying this. I don't understand that. I don't understand this. And this, I don't understand as well. Well, that's a good thing. Okay. If you don't know, if you know what you don't understand, this is your list to start working on to improve. Okay. Because you're going to need those skills going forward. All right, so hopefully this little video helped you out. If that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.